Hello everyone, how are you fine folks doing today? This is AppleAndApps.com with a super special edition of our in-action videos and it's because we're checking out iOS 7 developer preview and this is beta 1 and let's show you what it is. Here you go. This is the brand new home screen of iOS 7 and as you can see if you saw the WWDC keynote this morning there's a brand new design and now we're gonna dive into it to see all that it has in store. And you know, Apple they didn't just change a few things here and there. They redesigned every single pixel as part of iOS. And, I mean, it's noticeable right off the top. There's just so much going on. And let's just start diving in with the new features. And a swipe up reveals the brand new control center. And it gives you quick actions like Bluetooth and lock. And you can change the brightness. And then you can playback or change your media playback if we had some and then there's four functions at the bottom flashlight clock calculator and camera with the latter three taking you to those respective apps and then of course there's airdrop and then notification center it's brand new we don't have any notifications at the moment but as you can see it's an all-new de design that takes advantage of that translucent style so you can see the home screen kind of bleed through and then it has these new little details about what your calendar and the weather outlook all for the day. And so let's dive into messages. So this is how new messages look. All kinds of details. That's how they fly in. And then look at the keyboard. It's translucent. So see this blue message? You're going to see it populate right now into the Y and the U as you scroll through. And then there's just a bounce to each little bubble as you're going through. So that's messages. And then calendar. This one might have the starkest difference in design as Apple's cut a lot of the clutter out. You know, previously it was based on like that desk calendar. Now it's just a digital interface that focuses on your day, your calendar entries, and let's see how easy it is to enter. So we add an event, as you can see. You can go drag them just like usual. It doesn't seem like there's that quick entry of Fantastical, but there is an option for Inbox, which we'll see if that's dived into later and later as if it's more like mailbox but we'll see and then photos and camera are tied together oh, we got a new message so let's go into notification center and we have a message right here and swiping across there's no quick way to respond so if I tap on it it's gonna take me to that application it's not going to have a quick reply function, which is something we were hoping for. But anyway, now on to photos. You have your different photo streams going on. And then as you see, they're, it's not just one big list. They're actually separated. So here, it's not just uh, screenshots for game reviews and app reviews, but split based on this hike we took over in Glendale. And as you can see, it's set up as an event. And then you have a share, and you can share this whole event and that brings up the new share sheet which lets you do airdrop and then you have these different actions right here and say you're looking at a particular photo there's even more sharing options as you can see and that's pretty much what photos is all about better organization of your particular photos and there are new editing options as well so you can apply the filters that are included in the camera app which we'll show you in a second to these photos right there. Cool. And now, <laughs> said enough about camera, so let's jump into it. As you can see, it's right here, checking it out. And here's the photo filters, and they're all live previews, nine different thumbnails. It's kind of like analog camera, as well as a photo booth on the iPad. And then HDM HDR is right here. You know, Apple has that hidden away currently, so now you can access it really quickly and then just snap a photo like that. There's still no a quicker way. It's a specific button you have to press. But then you can swipe left and right 
to jump into different modes. So there's video with a swipe to the left, and then you have square crop and then panorama rather than having to dive into the options to perform that panorama action. And that's the new camera app. As you can see, it's the black design. Other apps have focused more on white, and Apple's alternated between the two. Weather has a lot going on. As if you saw the keynote, Apple made a big deal about it, and it's because it's really well done. They even have these animated backgrounds. Hopefully you can see this uh, weather and the rain going on in New York. And it's very reminiscent of the Yahoo weather app, and Apple already has their weather data supplied by Yahoo, so it makes sense. And then you can pinch to view a look out of all your different cities. And that's weather. It's a quick, really quick way to see the essential weather stats that you want to know about. And again, a lot like Yahoo weather. Clock, not much can be done with clock. You see the new design elements, but it's still the same functionality. Maps, again, this app, it's going to be the same functionality, and the biggest driver is going to be the back-end data rather than the actual app. But you have the same style that you're familiar with of zooming in, performing the flyover. We'll check out Dodger Stadium, as you can see, like so. And then you also see the translucent in the menu at the top and the bottom is based on the calendar or based on the map background it changes as you scroll and then the directions we got that like usual start them up Starting Siri voice isn't powered stadium. in yet Head west on to this East first Laurel beta Avenue. version then turn left but it, onto it's North the same uh, type of style but now it's minimized so it's this white clean crisp style rather than having all these extra fancy gloss and those type of digital attributes. But it's essentially the same function set, as you can see. Okay? And then videos, not much can be done with videos. You have your iCloud videos right here. Same with TV shows and your shared iTunes libraries. I mean, there's nothing really much that can be done. There's not really much that can be done, but it doesn't look like Apple actually has set up any type of support for multiple formats. Let's move on. Notes is a big change because, you know, the previous one is based on a notepad where you're getting yellow piece of paper. Even the icon has a ruffled, torn page at the top. This one, as you can see, it's white. All that yellow is simply into the accents of the notes and the done buttons like so and you just give them a list of your notes rather than a digital representation of a notepad reminders kinda works in the same way as you can see you even have it's almost like passbook with these different cards that you can bring up and then you can swipe them back down and switch around like so. Oops. And then you can click one off. You can also swipe to delete it. And it's just a quicker, easier way to use reminders. Stocks, there's not much to it. It looks almost exactly the same, except it has a black, simpler theme rather than that blue one that was before. If you use stocks, there it is. Game Center is a big change because as you can see, that green felt, as Craig Federici said, we ran out. So now it's these colored glossy bubbles, which the gloss is a bit odd, just thinking of the rest. You'd think maybe these bubbles wouldn't be glossy, but it shows you everything that you could want right in the splash screen. And then you can dive into what games you have available. And then it's listed by the points, or the most recent, and then previously it said you've earned like 10 out of 32 achievements. Now it's listed by points. And then there's challenges, and say you tap on this Temple Run 2 challenge, the bubble theme is here, so you can, I don't have it installed, you can tap on this free app, or you can just dismiss the challenge, 
And then turns is interesting because Apple talked about it briefly in iOS 6, but they didn't build it out. So maybe now turn-based games are going to be accessible right in Game Center because these apps aren't actually installed on this device yet. So that's interesting. And you even see the icon, how different that is. Newsstand is also very different. But instead of wood, you're getting more of these uh, virtual shelves that are just based on the translucent style everywhere else. This also ties into the store. And speaking of the stores, we've got the iTunes and the App Store, which offer a very similar design with different content. So as you can see, it's the same white design, and rather than iOS 6 version where it's black in the bottom bar with specific tabs for each of these sections, they're just all melded together and it makes these just cleaner, simpler, and then there's a black design when you get to movies. App Store has a similar offering. The main difference is this near me function which is actually new in iOS 7 but you know this is for points of interest say you're by a museum or something obviously it's not as tied into your house and it's not completely built in with the different APIs and then updates has big potential to be different because Apple's made Delta updates possible so the apps update automatically in the background so you won't have to have you know that 10 updates and manually do that. Passbook looks awfully familiar and similar to the original. Um, you have the same sharing functionality. Let's see if they actually removed that paper shredder delete function. Yeah, <laughs> I thought they would. That was a Super Scott Forstall edition. And that's uh, Passbook. Compass, there's not really much to expect with Compass. So here's Compass. It's uh, I don't use them that much, so it doesn't mean the most. But it has the all-new black theme. And then we'll dive into phone and we'll save settings for a bit. So the phone, the main addition is going to be when new calls come in to highlight your contact's photos. But again, it offers that same simpler design. Mail has a similar idea. What's neat is that they've built in swipe functionality, so you simply swipe from the left side of the screen to go back and then go into the main menu. That's built in a lot of third-party apps, and now it's in Messages and Mail. Safari, it has a lot going on. So you have Reading List built right in. And then you got your bookmarks. You got a unified search address, and then there's even little icons for your favorites and your bookmarks. So we'll check out appleandapps.com. Here we go, it's right here. As you can see, checking out all the new WWDC coverage today. And then when you swipe down, the bottom bar, it minimizes and the top bar isn't as pronounced of the unified search. And that's uh, the new Safari. Again, minimal design and new icons for the different functions. So we'll also open up a couple other tabs. And... Apple. And then with the new tabs, we can see the new tab view in Safari. So, you know, it's kind of like a, a file drawer of going through the different pages. And then you can close them by swiping. Finally, there's music, which has a big new feature, which is iTunes Radio. And it's built right into the music app rather than a separate app. And so here we got Radio right off the top. And let's uh, music her to WWDC. So as you can see, we got this right here, and then you press the star, and you can play more like this, never play this song again, or add it to white iTunes wish list to maybe purchase later. And of course, you can also purchase right now, right in the upper right corner, and then you find out more information about a particular artist. And that is essentially what it has for iTunes Radio. iTunes Radio is probably a better name than iRadio. And then for your music act itself, you get to the little Beatles playlist right here. You got the, this is iTunes Match, so you can see all the iTunes Cloud icons on the right side. Playing Here Comes the Sun. And then also, you can rotate your device to landscape and see the album view. So the first one that we've seen only had one album at a time and now you get this huge thumbnail grid array of albums so that's pretty neat
And then let's swipe up. You can see here's the little control center for music playback. And that's pretty much what the music app has in store. And now I guess we'll dive into settings. So as you can see, it's essentially the same, but with that white theme thrown throughout. And at the very bottom, there's Flickr and Vimeo social support built right in, which is similar to Twitter and Facebook and iOS 6. And since we're here, let's change the wallpaper to this dynamic wallpaper. So as you can see, you tilt the device and the background changes. So that's pretty neat. Same idea here. I do like this nebula wallpaper though. So let's choose that. And now let's go to the lock screen to see our new Nebula wallpaper. So from the lock screen, you can swipe down to bring up Notification Center. You can swipe up to bring up your Control Center. And you do this without locking your device. And camera's still here. You also have the ability to swipe anywhere to unlock. You know, you can grab anywhere on the screen, not that particular slide to unlock place. And let's bring up multitasking. So you double tap, and you can see all the apps that we went through in one smooth chain. And then you can swipe them out if you're done with them. So you don't even want them running in the background, taking up any resources if they are doing so. And that's multitasking. It's that Palm Pre style, and it works really good. You know, just the addition of multitasking and Control Center are worth it. If they would have just added those to iOS 6, I'd be happy. Then there's three other apps, but we wanted to show this folder view. So Context is not going to be much different, same idea. Calculator, again, but the folder, it has that same translucent style, and it's not that. It really stands out, and if you had more apps in this folder, it gives you pages and pages at nine at a time. One thing I did want to show is We've downloaded this other app from the App Store, Sparkle 2, really good marble shooter. But look how out of place the icon looks set on your, with all these new apps. So developers might have to update apps, and it's going to be a little mismatch at the start when iOS 7 is first released. So I think there's new Siri features as well. Let's try. Tell me more about Sea Lions. Okay, so we got the search results right here. And then that's going to open Safari. But let's say... Tell me more about sea lions from Wikipedia. You can see the translucent background as you're, you know, waiting on Siri results. And it, this is still the old version of Siri's voice. The new version's not coming yet because this is still just the first preview. But as you see, you got Wikipedia results built right in, and the previous one was Bing. So that's cool. And I think that's it for iOS 7. Oh, swipe left doesn't bring up the search function. But a swipe in the middle of the screen does. Huh. So you still have the usual search, but it's just in a different fashion. So a swipe from the top is Notification Center, but a swipe in the middle around where Reminders are brings you Search. And that's essentially what iOS 7 has in store as of the first developer beta. And we're just going to give you a preview of what to expect. It's coming this fall. Anything we've shown is subject to change as since it is a beta. And this is Apple and Apps in Action Video, and we'll talk to you next time.